Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to learn about regular expressions. So, what are regular expressions? Regular expressions are special strings that represent a search pattern, also known as regex or re regex specs. They help programmers match search and replace text. Regular expressions can appear cryptic because a few characters have special meaning. The goal is to combine the symbols and text into a pattern that matches what you want, but only what you want. This section will cover the characters, a few shortcuts, and the common uses for writing regular expressions. You'll, you'll understand once we start going here. Let's just go on to the first lesson. Using the test method, so regular expressions are denoted by doing forward slash and then the string that you want to match and then another forward slash. And we can test this by doing dot test on the regular expression and then passing in my string. And it'll return true if hello is found inside the string, which it is, so it should be true. And let's try that. Yep, match literal strings. Here we want to find Waldo in this string. So instead of search here, we can put in Waldo and now result will turn true. So let's try that. Yep, match a literal string with different possibilities. We can do this with this pipe, which stands for or. So in this case, we want to do dog or cat or bird. So dog or cat or bird or even fish. And since cat is in the string, result should be true. Ignore case while matching. Um, here we can put an I at the end of the backslashes and that will mean it's case insensitive. So here we'll do free code camp and it will still be true even though it doesn't match the case correctly because we put an I at the end. And there's other special characters that you can put back here like G and um, some others. But I is used quite a bit because sometimes we just need to match a string of characters and not worry about case. So let's try that. Yep. Extract matches. Here we want to do our exact string dot match, and then we can pass in our coding rejects into it. It's the opposite as the test method, like this explains. And we want to find the word coding. So there we find the word coding, and then we match it, and then result becomes the result becomes an array of that word. Let's try that. Yep, find more than the first match. This is done with the G flag. So we can have G and I back here, which stands for global and insensitive to case. And we want to find twinkle. So now it'll find this one and it'll find this one and put it in an array like this. Oh, actually we want to match as well. A match star rejects. And let's console log the result just to show. So yeah, there's the result, twinkle and twinkle. Let's try it. Yep, match anything with the wildcard period. Here we want to match run, sun, fun, pun, none, and bun. And the way we can do that is by doing dot un, and that should work for this test. So it'll find fun and result should be true. Yep, match single characters with multiple possibilities. This is done by using brackets. So first of all, we want to match our rejects, but of course we want to do quote sample dot match. Match the vowel rejects, and then change this so that it finds all the vowels, A, E, I, or U. And then we also want it to be global so that it finds all of them, and also case insensitive. And I think that should work. Let's try it. Yep, match letters of the alphabet. Here we can select a bunch of letters by doing A through another letter, and it's in alphabetical order. So we can do A through Z and it'll match all of the characters. It'll match all of the letters at least. So here we want to match all of these. So we'll go A through Z, case insensitive and global, and then we'll do quote sample.match and we'll match it with this rejects. And let's try that. Yep, match numbers and letters of the alphabet. We can also do this thing with numbers as well. So the same as we do A through Z, we can do 0 through 9. So for the challenge, we want H through S and 2 through 6, and then case insensitive and global as well, and then do quote sample dot match again. Match it with the rejects and try it. Yep. Match single characters not specified. Here we can use this caret operator to say anything that's not this. So for the challenge, we want to have a rejects that matches all characters that are not a number or a vowel. So here we'll change this to being not, so not with the caret, and then a, a number, so zero through nine, or a vowel, which is A, E, I, or U. And then we'll set the global flag and the case insensitive flag, and then we'll do quote sample dot match on my rejects and run it. Yep, match characters that occur one or more times. This is done with the plus character. For the challenge, we want to find where S occurs more than once. So here we'll do S plus, and then we'll set it as global. And we also don't want it to be insensitive because it, we want lowercase s's, and then try that out. Yep, match characters that occur zero or more times. This is done with the star character. It's exactly like the plus sign except it does zero or more times instead of one or more times. And for the challenge, we want to have this be 
uppercase a and then lowercase a followed by followed by an asterisk or star and that will match arg all the way up to the last a so let's try that yep find characters with lazy matching so by default regular expressions are greedy which means they try and find the longest possible substring that matches. So the example they give is with Titanic. They want to find T, A through Z, and I, and it'll find Titani instead of just Ty, even though Ty matches as well. But the way that we turn off the greediness of regular expressions is by putting a question mark character in inside of the regular expression, and that will make it not greedy anymore. So for the challenge, we would just want to add a question mark here. And that way it'll just grab the h1 here instead of the whole thing so let's try that yep find one or more criminals in a hunt here's a little challenge by free code camp and i'll complete it and then show you after okay i think all we needed was a capital c plus and it'll find one or more criminals within the group of other people because the criminals rep represented by the capital letter c so let's try this yep match beginning string patterns this is done with the caret we used caret inside of a brackets before to negate whatever that was but we can also use it outside of the brackets and that just means that it'll check the start of the string so here we'll do caret cal and it'll match up with cal here so let's try that yep match ending string patterns this is done with the dollar sign at the end of a regular expression so kind of like the caret at the in the other one here we want to find caboose at the end so we put a dollar sign and it'll match up with this caboose here and return true match all letters and numbers this is done with the uh, backslash w it's the shortcut equal to a through z uppercase a through c lowercase and zero through nine underscore so here we'll just do backslash w and then we'll go case insensitive well actually i don't think you have to even do that but we also want it to be global so it finds all of them and let's try that yep match everything but letters and numbers this is done with the capital backslash capital w and it's the same thing as not a through z a through z is zero through nine underscore so i'll change this to backslash uppercase w and with the g flag find all of them and i'm guessing it'll only find the dot but yeah let's try it Yep, match all numbers. We can do backslash D to match zero through nine. It's just a shorthand way of doing it. So you can just think digits and then we'll set it to be global as well. So it finds two zero zero one and let's try that. Yep, match all non numbers with backslash uppercase D. So here we'll do backslash uppercase D and G flag as well and try that. Yep, restrict possible usernames. For this challenge, we want to make a regular expression that checks if a username is valid and a username has to fit all four of these criterias. They can only be alphanumeric characters. Numbers in the username have to be at the end. They cannot start with the number. They can be lowercase or uppercase and they have to be at least two characters long. So I'll see what I can come up with and show you. Okay, I think this might work. So it checks A through Z, A through Z. Oh, maybe also. So it makes sure it has a letter at the beginning and then you can use numbers afterwards. And then it has to be at least these two characters long and then the plus sign to do one or more of these. So let's try this. Looks like it doesn't match A1 or it does match A1, but it shouldn't. And it matches this, but it shouldn't. And it matches this and it also should not. I think that's because the only numbers in the username have to be at the end. So I think first I'll get rid of the zero through nine here. And then maybe I'll put the plus in the middle and then do zero through nine at the end. So maybe all I had to do was move the plus to the middle. Let's try that out. Uh, same problem. All right, here I had to use a hint from Free Code Camp, but I'll try and explain what this is doing. So the caret at the beginning is checking at the start that the start matches A through Z, A through Z, and then we can have as many of those characters as we want after those two. And then we can have digits afterwards and zero or more of those digits. And the dollar sign means at the end. Or we can do A through Z at the start with a digit as long as there's another digit following at the end. And then it's case insensitive. So this is A through Z and uppercase A through Z. So yeah, hopefully I explained that decently. Let's try it. Yep. Match white space. That's done with backslash S. So here we'll change this to backslash S and then we'll check globally. So it'll basically just count the amount of spaces in here, which there is five. So if we did dot length here, then it result would be five. But right now it's just an array of five spaces. So let's try that. Yep. Match non white space characters. That's done with a backslash uppercase S. So it'll find all these words and not the spaces. Let's try that. Oh, it needs to be global. Now let's try it. 
Yep. Specify upper and lower number of matches. That's done with brackets, like this example here. There has to be three to five number of A's for it to match. So for the challenge, we want to check if there's three to six number of H's. So we'll start with an O, and then we'll do H bracket three to six, and then we'll go backslash S for white space, and then no, and we'll try that out. Yep, specify only the lower number of matches. This is done by not even giving a second number to the brackets. So we'll change this to be H, A, Z, and then bracket four or more. So we'll go four comma and then bracket and then A, H at the end. And let's try that out. Yep, specify exact number of matches. That's done with just a number in between the brackets. So here we want to check if Timber has four M's. So we'll go M, four of them, and then Burr. Let's try that. Yep, check for all or none. That's done with the question mark after a letter. So here, U is questionable if it's in it, and it'll match color or color. So U doesn't even have to be in it for it to match. So here we'll change this to be fave for it, and then U is optional after the O. So we'll go U question mark, and that should work here. Yep, positive and negative look aheads. This is with the question mark equals and question mark exclamation point. A practical use of this would be to check if a password has at least three to six characters of words or of letters and then three to six characters of numbers. Oh, at least one number actually. So for the challenge, we want to create a rejects that matches passwords that are greater than five characters long. Do not begin with numbers and have two consecutive digits. So we'll go with a caret to check the start and make sure there's not a digit with capital D. So that checks that it doesn't begin with numbers. And then we'll make sure it's five characters long by doing question mark equals backslash W of five comma. Actually, we probably don't need a comma there. But then the next part, we're checking if there's any number of characters after that and that there's two consecutive digits inside of the string. So let's just console log some of these quick. Make sure there's a parenthesis here as well. So right now it's false because there's no two consecutive digits in here. But as soon as I add some digits, then it's true. If I put a number at the beginning, then it'll be false. It seems like it works. So maybe if I have less characters, then it'll be false again. Yep, so it has to be five characters long. And let's try this out. Yep, check for mixed grouping of characters. Here they're checking if there's penguin or pumpkin by using parentheses and by using the or. So for the challenge, we want to check if it's Eleanor Roosevelt or Franklin Roosevelt. So we'll go Franklin or Eleanor and then backslash S for white space and then Roosevelt. And then we'll change the result to test that. So we'll go my rejects.test my string and let's try that out. Oh, it looks like it should match Franklin D Roosevelt as well. So we'll go backslash. So we'll do another set of parentheses and then it can be a space or it can be a D. Actually for the middle name, We'll do wildcard, so dot, and then star, so any number of characters for the middle name. And let's try that. Yep, there we go. Reuse patterns using capture groups. It's done with backslash and then a number. I'm not entirely sure how this would be super useful, but uh, I'll try doing this challenge here. We'll start with parentheses and do backslash digit with a plus, so it can be any number of digits. And then we'll go backslash S for white space and backslash one to start at the first one. Not sure if this will work, but let's try it. Nope, maybe if I change it to three, let's try that. Okay, I think I understand the this backslash number thing now. So backslash one means this group. So it'll go, it'll check for the digit plus and then it'll go space and it'll check for another, another digit plus, but it won't do anything more than that. So I think I need to put parentheses around backslash S plus, and then I can do backslash one and backslash two and then backslash one. So I'll check if there's a digit and then it'll check if there's a space and then it'll check if there's a digit again. Um, let's try this out. No. Okay, I guess it's no parentheses or backslash s and it'll just be backslash one then another backslash s instead of backslash two and then backslash one dollar sign to check at the end and then i guess this works so we'll run it what so we have to check if this is at the start with a carrot i guess now it'll work yep okay use capture groups to search and replace so here we want to do string dot replace and then we want to do our fix rejects. And then we want to do dollar sign three, dollar sign one. Yeah, we'll go dollar sign three, then dollar sign two, then dollar sign one. And then we'll grab the three words using our capture groups. So we'll go with parentheses. We need three parentheses. 
and then we'll do spaces in between them and it'll be backslash word plus for all three of these or backslash character plus so these will match up with one two and three and then there's spaces in between and then this will switch the order of them so it'll take three and put it onto the first one and it'll take two keep it where it is and it'll take one and move it to the end now actually i can get rid of this string that I replaced because they already do it for me and instead just do dollar sign three dollar sign two dollar sign one and let's try that Yep. Remove white space from start and end. So I'm guessing here we can do caret and then do a grouping of backslash s plus. And then we'll go with another grouping of the word. So backslash w plus. And then we'll do another grouping of white space. And we'll check that that's at the end with the dollar sign. And then we'll go hello dot replace with our rejects. And we'll replace it with just dollar sign two. So that way it'll just keep this grouping. I think this might work. Let's try it. Nope, it works for, no, it doesn't. Let's try console logging it. Okay, it looks like it's not getting rid of any spaces. Okay, so I guess we just want to grab the white space at the beginning or the white space at the end by doing backslash S plus dollar sign for the end. And then we just want to replace that with nothing. So yeah, that should work. It looks like it should work. Maybe double quotes. No, maybe I need a global thing here. Now try it. Wow, okay, I guess that works now. So there we go, we completed the regular expressions part of Free Code Camp. We did all 33 of these challenges, and I hope you learned a lot about regular expressions. They're actually very useful, and I learned some new things as well, so. Next up we have debugging, and that one should be a shorter one, but that's it for me today, so I'll see you later, bye.